Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlothauer here in the home weather office for Thursday, November the 30th, 2023. We are literally less than 24 hours away before we turn the calendar into December 1st. But what is the pattern going to look like as we start off December? Are we going to see wild temperatures? Are we going to see big storms? Well, find out much more right now. So looking at the latest European model that just got done rendering, as we look at the United States here, you can't miss it here on the weather belt map that we're looking at. The greens do indicate light to moderate rainfall that is falling over Oklahoma, over eastern Texas, over Louisiana, as well as Arkansas into Missouri. That's that system that is triggering some severe weather for the deep south locations, but not as big as what we first thought. But what's going to be bigger uh, is what is going to come by the end of this week into early next week for the Pacific Northwest. We're talking a big big powerful atmospheric river that will unleash some of the heaviest rainfall in early December in more than five plus years. So by the first day of December, you can see where that Midwest storm is going to be located, stretching from the deep south into the southeast, into the upper Midwest, into the lower Great Lakes. A little bit of snowfall out of this one because we have those dynamic cooling temperatures aloft, and that's going to unleash a little bit of snowfall. But again, come on. This is not your big storm system that we're all talking about. It's all going to be in the Pacific Northwest, and it's going to be a doozer. In fact, there is heavy snowfall that is forecasted by all of the global and high-resolution models for Friday morning into Friday afternoon. This is in about 24 or so hours. The blue on your screen right over here in the Pacific Northwest really dissects where the heaviest snowfall is going to be. And this is not your typical storm by any means. This, there's going to be a lot of snowfall leaping over the Appalachians, or not over the Appalachians, over the Cascades, excuse me there, because of very strong, formidable westerly flow and a lot of dynamics or upper-level support for this system. So, yeah, if you are in uh, the inland valleys in Oregon and Washington, yeah, you're going to get some snow, and some of it could be heavy at times. Not only that, for the lower elevations, we're talking about some light to moderate rainfall that is anticipated. It doesn't end there. By Saturday, December the 2nd, you can see heavy rainfall expected to rapidly develop again for the southeast. So, like Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and northwestern Florida, you could get some pretty intense rainfall, some severe weather and some flood concerns. Yep, that's what happens when you get El Nino. We're starting to get that kick in here in the office as we're tracking these weather systems. The pattern is slowly shifting towards more of an active one like we should see in early to mid-December. The Pacific Northwest is still going to get clobbered and clobbered with heavy rainfall and then it really gets going. Look at this. By Sunday morning, heavy rainfall, Strong winds, formidable uh, uh, flooding potentially that could lead to some um, landslides because you've been having too much rainfall there as we're tracking more disturbing weather across the Midwest. That's for Sunday. Let's go all the way into Monday. That atmospheric river finally breaks away. But not only that, when that goes away, guess what we got going on in the Northeast? Our next big snowstorm. And I mean big According to the Euro here, four days out, those dark blue colors do indicate that we're going to be seeing some snowfall rates that could exceed three to six inches an hour. Not only that, there's also going to be some gusty winds that's going to blow around the snow, really make travel very dangerous to nearly impossible. So keep that in mind. That's going to be moving out of the region by Tuesday early morning with quieter weather after that. But it's not long before our next storm system marches on in in the Pacific Northwest. You can see this by Tuesday morning, more atmospheric river events, more flooding, more strong winds. Wow. The, d the time to be away from the Pacific Northwest is now and not say in four or five days from now because it's when it rains, it pours, and when it pours, it's not going to stop for a while. And you can see this rain, rain again through the middle of next week. Yeah, through the middle of next week. And finally after that, some of the models here, including the Euro, do indicate that you will finally get a break. But one of those troughs are going to do something else for us. And if the European model is correct on this scenario, this could be one of the strongest most destructive Santa Ana wind 
and Diablo Wind events in nearly a few years. You can see why. Very amplified trough. I mean, this is really digging further south. In fact, so far south that the 537 decameter height line that is below freezing in an average column of the atmosphere stretches into northern Mexico. Northern Mexico, come on. That is very amplified. And you can see offshore flow around that over California. You're going to see some strong winds potentially. And some of the other models are agreeing on this scenario. But the Euro particularly is extremely bullish at showing the strongest winds, which could gust over 80 miles an hour in some areas. Now, another thing that's not normal about this weather pattern is going to be the far above average temperatures. And I mean, come on. We're in early December, and it's going to still feel like early fall for some locations. Here's why. Because of one, we got zonal flow, and two, we got some big ridges that could really impact the Midwest, bringing some really warm temperatures for this time of the year. I shouldn't say warm, but it's going to be warmer than it should be. And so instead of it being cool, it might be mild. And where it's mild, it might be warm. So looking at the next one to two days, this is an average one-day temperature anomaly forecast from the Euro. And you can see the orange colors here really illustrate where the warmer than normal temperatures are going to be. And some areas down there in the southeast could have temperatures as much as 10 to 15 degrees above normal. It's not typical with El Nino where it should be warmer than average in portions of the northern Rockies. You're going to see near average to below average temperatures, right? But the pattern really changes by day four and five on average. Look how warm the Canadian area gets. Look at Hudson Bay. You can see temperatures 15 to 25 degrees above average, and it gets warmer. Look at this. One of these big ridges is going to unleash some very warm temperatures, uh, warmer than average. I mean, look at the northern plains. Are you kidding me? Where is our Arctic air? It's not even in Canada. I cannot even find any of it here on the map other than if you're in the northeast, you're going to have below average temperatures in the southeast. That's because you're going to have a lot of snow on the ground, keeping the air cool, but you're also going to get a lot of precipitation and active weather, and that's going to keep temperatures down. A look at this, very warm for the northern tier and for Canada. In fact, some of those anomalies there are even 35 degrees above average. So where it should already be in the negative territory, so let's kind of make this uh, more pronounced. Let's kind of go back. Yeah, right here, this is for Friday after or Thursday afternoon for next week. Look at temperatures there should already be in the single digits or even in the negative territory. Nope, not going to happen this go around. Temperatures there are going to be in the uh, uh, upper 20s to even lower 30s. That is really, really warm for Hudson Bay standards. So if you're in Canada, you're going to complain about how warmer the average temperatures are going to be versus what it should be otherwise. Now, beyond this, the Euro does some crazy, wild, unrealistic predictions here as far as our temperature anomalies go. You're going to see temperatures never before in Phoenix, Arizona, 20 to yeah, 15 to 25 degrees below average. Cold air where it shouldn't belong for an El Nino at all. We're talking about a La Nina setup with an inside slider. Cold air coming out of the north. It's going to be dry. We're going to see high fire danger, limited moisture with this one. Versus if you go on the eastern half of the U.S., it's you guys are complaining about how warm it's going to be or how mild. I should just use the word mild because it is going to be awfully mild there as you can see with your temperature forecast. Speaking of temperatures, here's a look at your temperature forecast forecast over the next um, several hours and you can see the warmer weather really gonna try to get amped up there over the next couple of days look at the deep south temperatures almost in the 80s florida for all we know gonna be in the low 80s for your weekend for the first half of the weekend it um, should be and even the second half they're gonna see temperatures in the mid 80s like over lake okeechobee miami Fort Lauderdale, oh my goodness, it's going to be baking warm there, temperatures above average. And even look at this, for the northern tier, going to be really warm too, thanks again to limited amounts of cold Arctic air. We're not seeing much of these blasts like we had with Winter Storm Elliott. We all know how bad that one was in, uh, in December. So going forward, uh, this is for December the 6th. I mean, look how warm these temperatures are. This is, this is very concerning. 
you're seeing temperatures in the mid 50s in the Dakotas in Montana where you should see temperatures already in the single digits. All right, this is just not normal. This I cannot explain it. It just does not make sense. Temperatures going to be really warm too on the 7th of December and it still continues maybe beyond that temperatures do come down a little bit over Montana, but I mean that's only slightly below average. All, the whole other portion of the country is just going to be bathed in orange, which is above average. The reason why this pattern is going to happen is, first of all, the jet stream is not behaving like it should be. It is wild. It is very wavy. And so we are seeing very extreme conditions. Either it's going to be too cold or it's going to be too warm or the flow is going to be so zonal that it's going to evac a lot of warm air into the Midwest. And so we can see this here on the geopotential height. The blue contours and the shading usually indicate below average heights, which means the air mass is relatively cooler than it should be because cooler weather means cooler heights or lower heights, right? And so we can see this uh, amplify by the time we go into, say, Saturday into Sunday. Ridge in the east, trough in the west. What does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean cold air anymore for the Midwest. It means the opposite. And this is going to continue. Trough moves through eventually by day four. But then look what happens. Uh-oh, SpaghettiO got a big old fat ridge of high pressure that tries to build on in in across the Midwest, but mainly dominating the four corners. And then look what happens after that. I mean, come on, just ask yourself that this is just not okay. This pattern is sickening to see. And the concerning thing is it's been in the last few model runs. Let's take a look at the zero Z last night, right? Same old pattern, right? And then the 12 Z similar with that low trying to dig southward into California. Well, look at this ridge has been something else here in the Midwest. And so if you're looking forward to any cooler weather, sorry, you might want to come back to this channel in a month from now. And then maybe I'll have some good news for you. All right. No, don't leave the channel. Don't leave the channel. But you get the idea. OK, not going to see cooler Arctic outbreaks. I just don't think it's going to happen. It'll be a very warm early December for many locations. This makes perfect sense and this really rings a bell to a lot of you. Look at the orange and red colors that kind of cover much of the U.S., especially in Bismarck over Sioux Falls, Lincoln, Des Moines, Minneapolis. You're going to see tempters uh, temperature chances there at 80%. So right now the Climate Prediction Center is thinking that you could have a 80% chance for above average temperatures. I mean that, come on. There's literally less than a 20% chance of seeing anything below average at this point in time. Even including for Indiana, the Deep South, much of the nation here is just kind of bathed in red colors. Let's take a look at the 8 to 14 day forecast as far as those temperature chances go. If this could actually load on me, I don't think it's going to load. There we go. We got it to work. 8 to 14 day, still likely above average across much of the Midwest. So yeah, if you want the cold Arctic outbreaks, not going to happen. I'm sorry. I have to bring you all bad news. And worse comes to worse. Look at the precipitation forecast, dry and warmer than it should be across the Midwest, the Southeast, and the Eastern half. While it's cooler, it's more milder, I should say, I shouldn't say cool, but it's wet there for the Pacific Northwest, including for Oregon, Washington, and Northern California in the 6 to 10 day forecast. Let's take a look now at our precipitation outlook for the 8 to 14 day, um, and it does get wetter for the Deep South, so fingers crossed that actually comes back to pass or comes true because you all need drought relief there for the northern plains not going to really see much in the way of significant amounts of above average um, precipitation or more storms it's going to be near normal for the southwestern u.s for like california going to be drier than it should be and hopefully after that point we can get some more storminess coming into central southern and northern california with that being said i want to show you something very cool that i created over the last week or so 
on the computer here, of course, in my home weather office is my new website. And I want to share this with you all really quickly before I close down the video is first of all, I shared this in a community post and some of you already like it very much. And so if you haven't visited it yet, I would highly recommend doing so. There is a link in the description below this video leading to the SacramentoWeatherCenter.com website. All right. But it's really actually Sacramento Weather Center office or weather forecast office that I do. And you can see my about page uh, about who I am. I'm going to add more to this over time. So uh, expect more updates to the website to come, including my most important. That's kind of why I created this is my blog. So if you guys want to get my updates almost on an everyday basis, you can go check out my blog by clicking blog. Once you get to the website, you can see it right here. And then, of course, the most exciting thing is the links. All the links that I use for my weather forecasts and others that I'm adding to this will be listed here. So if you want to check out the National Weather Service, you can click the link and it takes you right to the National Weather Service. If you want to go to, let's just say, the atmospheric river scale, some of you um, may wonder what this actually is. You can learn more about it here by going to the atmospheric river uh, by clicking the link. Uh, all the links are just here. Zoom Earth included. Um, you can um, check this out too. These programs that I use, very exciting. And I'm excited to present you all this. And then, of course, you can see the disclaimer. And you can also show your support by making a $5 donation today to help keep the website running smoothly. You can also check out my Twitter page. There's a link in the description below this video leading to my Twitter page where you can get also updates on what's going on across the United States, especially with what the Euro show last night. I don't know how extreme you can get with this pattern. I made a tweet and a lot of people actually liked it. Really wavy. What if that came true, right? What would it be like, right? I'll tell you what, I'll give a little bit of a spoil alert. If a ridge like that builds over the eastern portion of Siberia, you could have temperatures 90 degrees above average. Okay, but then you go across the Bering Sea uh, into Alaska where you could have temperatures 40 to 50 degrees below average. So yeah, showing you the extreme of what these troughs can actually be. That's a very good example of what a very wavy amplitude wave pattern looks like on a model. Boy, there was a lot to talk about there. But otherwise, if you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already to show your support on my YouTube channel, my website, and also the Twitter page and everything. Also give this a huge thumbs up if you like today's video and share this video with their family and friends on social media, including my Sacramento Weather Center um, website, okay? I'm uh, moving away from uh, Facebook and that's gonna be where I post a lot of my um, discussions, all right? Be sure to check that out. Thank you all for watching. I'll be back with you more tomorrow.